Definitely. What was the atmosphere like in the Diva Locker Room? In the Diva Locker Room during the contest or on the actual show? Just on the actual while you were with Brand. It was really very back, honestly. We spent so much time together traveling and it just always when we were traveling that everyone kinda of ended up at the same gym in the morning to work out in whatever town we happened to be and we were just laid back and just I don't know. Well, there weren't a lot of like cat fights or people not getting along. It really wasn't wasn't any of that. And kind of you weren't in the locker room very much. You were in there to drop off your stuff and change and but everyone had their own itinerary for the day that they needed to do. Now, i got to ask you, as, you know, a worker, I know that when we go on the road, usually you have a person that you're partnered up with. Were you partnered up with somebody when you guys were traveling? Uh, not so much, because most of the wrestlers don't live on the West Coast. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I kind of tended to be flying out on flights by myself and, and much longer flights. Um, and the way my contract was structured, I didn't, uh, necessarily have to be on the road very much other than TV because I, I have other obligations, you know, in the Hollywood world. So I wasn't on the road for the house shows as much as everybody else. So I kind of, when I did travel, it was mainly for TV and some other shows, but I was mostly on my own. Definitely. Now, when you were like, what about when you were heading to the venue? Did you have somebody that you drove with? Uh, once in a while, but not really. I kind of just made my own way with Totally fine with me, just because the way my you know, being on the West Coast, like I said, my flights were different times than everyone else's. Was getting in much later, and you know, having to rent a car and do the whole get to the venue thing. Oh yeah, the reason I asked is because usually when on the road, usually it's like Rey Mysterio and Chavo ride together and people like that. So that's why I figured I'd ask that question. Right. So I'm gonna let Jonathan Clark go ahead. What's your opinion on the current Diva roster? Uh, even if you watch wrestling since you last. You know, I don't watch it a whole lot anymore. Um, I know that they have released quite a few people, and I heard that, you know, I just through the room now that they're bringing Gail Kim back. I think that's going to be really exciting because I think she's an incredibly talented diva, and I probably will watch once she starts having matches again. Um, and I just say that I was sad to hear that Trish had us left because I also thought she was really talented and hardworking. Definitely. My next question for you is, how did it feel to work alongside such talent as JBL, Kurt Angle, and The Big Show? I really enjoyed working with uh, The Big Show especially, but also JBL and Kurt Angle. I didn't spend a whole lot of time with JBL specifically just because he was kind of my arch enemy. Yeah. <laughs> when, I when I when I was there. Um, he was really professional and... and uh, didn't, you know, I didn't have a lot of interaction with him on a personal level. Kurt, I, I thought, was an amazing athlete, you know, as well. Um, and he kind of also had an adversarial relationship with me when I was there. And the big show is just a big key. I loved working with him, and we had so much fun together. Definitely. Do you still talk to any of your friends from WWE? I talk to a few people now and again. Um, Big Show and I are still friends, and I went to see him. It's been a while now, but uh, one of the times when they were in Anaheim, I, I went down and, and saw him and said hi. I still talk to people here and there, not as much, of course, as I did when I was, when I was with the company, but I still say hi now and again to, to see people. Definitely. Jonathan Clark, go ahead. Does, does it bother you that you never had a chance to really compete and show what you could do inside the ring? I know you had a couple of gimmick matches, but they didn't really showcase you as well as they should have. I honestly was learning to wrestle kind of on the fly when uh, we were on the road. I started learning some when we were overseas doing the the Italy tour and a little bit even during the Japan tour. And I was really bummed out that my matches didn't end up happening. I, I think I could have done a lot in the ring as, as far as that goes, and I wish I would have had more of an opportunity to grow that way just because once I got there, I have such a great respect for how hard everyone works and the athleticism that's involved in what they do that I really wanted to learn more and was so willing to learn anything that any wrestler would teach me about being in the ring at any time. Definitely. My next question for you is, what was your feelings when you were released from WWE? When I was released from WWE, I honestly thought it was a huge shock. I kind of 
found out on, I think it was a Sunday night. I think at the time when I was doing it, um, the show was taped on Tuesday, I think. I'm yeah. not 100% sure. Through SmackDown, yeah, it's Tuesday. So I would, my normal travel day would be Monday. So I had my travel orders, my itinerary, and I actually got the call kind of late on Sunday night and was really shocked and called a couple other wrestlers first and really, you know, Jackie Jada and Mark Bindrak and some other wrestlers I was friends with. And I guess most of them had found out earlier in the weekend, Friday. From what I hear, I was kind of the last one to find out. Type of thing that I was really yeah, kind of like everyone had already found out that you were going to be released before you did. No, they had found out that they were going to be released. Oh, they were released? Oh, wow. Yeah, didn't tell them who else was included in that, you know, bundle of people that were released. But I think there were quite a few of us in that one group, like about 50 or so, if I remember. Yep. But, but um, yeah, I was just really surprised. It kind of came out of nowhere for me. What are your thoughts, actually, on, like, the way that WWE just, like, drops the ball where they release 30 people in one day once a year? Well, I think the way that they do things is purely business. I don't think it's personal in any way. I don't I don't think that it's necessarily they're singling anyone out or picking on anyone. They they have a huge company to run and just, you know, budget issues that I can never even begin to know what goes into planning that. But I really think that Vince McMahon is an incredible businessman and if you look over the years the way he's grown his empire from there being, you know, small wrestling tech stories into what it is now, you know, it's just business. You can't, you can't take it personal. Exactly. John and Clark, go ahead. After your release from WWE, a career in acting began for you. What was that like, making the transition from wrestling to acting? I actually started out in acting and modeling, and that's where I came from. Okay. And what we were told, we the girls... Most of them that did the Steve Search the year, I did the casting, the original casting day in L.A., kind of by the airport. I think there were like two or three hundred girls that they called from all different casting agencies in L.A., and we were sort of all pitched in a way that they were trying to bring in talent that was more educated and had more of an acting background as, as far as that goes. So I came from from acting, so it really wasn't, it was more of me transitioning into the world of wrestling and learning that than, rather than, you know, transitioning into acting, so that's it came from. So, like, in a sense, it was almost a work when they were telling people via uh, the show to, like, send in their pictures and stuff. I think they actually did get some people that way, because I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, like, 99% sure that Michelle McCool came, she's from Florida, I'm pretty sure she came that, that route. She didn't okay. come from a casting agency, as far as I know. So there were actually girls that made it in, and I do believe they had just as much of a shot as anyone else. They were just looking for, you know, talent that specifically fit the yeah. types that they were looking for. Oh, yeah. Now, my next question for you is you've had many movie roles. Which one was your favorite to play? My favorite movie role to play? Um, I did an independent film a, a couple of years ago uh, called Pretty Cool 2. I think they may have renamed it Pocket Girl, and it's sort of like a skit on a reality show, um, Girls Next Door, Playboy Mansion kind of mm-hmm. thing, and I did a sort of like a money-hungry, juicy play um, named June. That character was a lot of fun to play because it was a comedy, and, you know, comedy's always fun. She gets to be a little more free and goof off a little bit more, rogues at times. 